All right, thanks, Caitlin. So welcome, everybody. Um, as you said, my name is Ryan Talz. I'm the CRM Product Manager here at Interdyne BMI. And we're going to be discussing, um, you know, why, where do you get this benefit? What, what's the uh, integration all about? And how an integrated system with Dynamics 365 for sales can really help you out. Um, I have one quick slide, again, about myself, just to talk a little bit about my experience. So prior to becoming a functional and technical consultant with Interdyne BMI, um, I worked in sales, marketing, and customer service positions, so really the, the core facets of Dynamics CRM and Dynamics 365. Um, and then I was just a salesperson with a strange obsession with database systems and kind of decided I really wanted to pursue this career in functional and technical consulting with uh, Microsoft Dynamics. Um, and through that time, I was a lead consultant for a number of years. And my favorite projects, the projects that I always saw the most you know, benefit gain where that return on investment really came in was these integration projects. So I'm very excited when I get to present and do webinars on these integrations because where you're really trying to find that most value per dollar, I really truly believe it is in the integration projects where CRM is kind of the, the front end for your sales team and then you have uh, systems such as NAV or AX for your ERP financial accounting teams. So, uh, all those years of doing projects has brought me to my current role, the CRM product manager, um, just kind of a fancy title for technical salesperson. You know, I, anytime we're doing pre-sales work or you need a solution architect, I'll come in and, you know, make sure our product's a good fit and figure out exactly how that's going to work. Um, and then we move it to our fantastic implementation team. So that's a little bit about me, how we work as a team. Uh, let's get into our topic for today. So here's our agenda. I'm gonna start off with a very brief introduction of what Dynamics 365 is. And I know this might be uh, redundant for some of you, but you know, I, I suspect that all of you will learn a little bit about it. It's um, the marketing's been lost on some of our customers before. So I always like to kind of clear up what the main objective is here. Um, next, we'll move into a demonstration of the integrated sales process. So I'm gonna go through some slides and kind of what that looks like, why integrate, um, give you, you know, CRM 101 in about 10 to 15 minutes uh, so you know what we're going to be doing before we get in and then you can start seeing, you know, how you might be able to see this work within a live environment and then we'll move to Q&A. So uh, I know we had a couple of familiar names on the attendees list for people who have attended my webinars in the past and if you had, you'd know I'm a firm believer in not wasting anybody's time. So uh, stick with me. I promise I'm only going to stick to the most pertinent information. Um, and, you know, I usually end about 15 to 20 minutes early uh, and we'll leave some time for Q&A. Um, but feel free to use that question box as we're going throughout. This webinar is for you. Um, so if there is something important that you want to ask on any, anything that I'm you know, currently presenting on, feel free to put that question and Caitlin will uh, pause me and we can go ahead and answer that question. OK, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So as I said first, let's talk a little bit about what Dynamics 365 is. What's this, this whole thing about? Why do we have the name changes? Um, you know, really what Dynamics 365 is, is this one unified uh, Microsoft vision of all these applications. And that starts with Office 365 or even some of the previous versions of Microsoft Office. You know, those applications that you use every day. You know, I'm talking about Outlook, Word, Excel. Um, and now even branching out into OneNote and things like SharePoint. What really Microsoft is trying to do is have this unified platform that you can use to you know, have all of your different applications talking to each other. So today we're gonna to be looking at primarily the Dynamics 365 for sales platform and how it might integrate with operations, also known as AX, um, as well as NAV. So you know, that's kind of the idea here. We're trying to take Office, these applications that we use all the time, integrated into this sales platform that's designed for your customer relationship management team. So that being sales, marketing, customer service. And then now how do we take that one step further and further tie that into our back end ERP systems? So that's kind of the uh, first two main sections. I'm not gonna get too much into the, the latter half, but um, there's a lot of other really cool applications that they're starting to sync in. Power BI is a fantastic analytics tool that are continually building in more and more AI, uh, getting into the Internet of Things, and then also things such as Power Apps, the ability to create 
know, customer facing phone applications without a single line of code. So just really cool stuff is, you know, this is what Dynamics 365 is all about and what, you know, this vision is for the future that Microsoft sees. So now that we've talked a little bit about Dynamics 365 as a whole, let's talk about the, you know, the main product for today and that's Dynamics 365 for sales. So the main components of, you know, if you were to put this in, uh, three point bulleted list of what it's trying to do. It's trying to help you grow business, stay focused, and win your deals faster. So it does this through a myriad of different ways. The platform is um, available to you, you know, in a, a bunch of different formats, whether that's the web, uh, being able to access it within browsers, from your phone and tablets for your salespeople on the road. Um, Microsoft has done an awesome job developing uh, very user-friendly, efficient applications for both iOS and Android. And if any of you are still sitting on Windows Phone, um, it does have those as well. Also, Outlook. Uh, you know, ag again, getting back to that vision with Dynamics 365, where we want to be able to have all these different applications talking. You know, any database system, not just CRM, but any database system is only as powerful as there, there are users that are willing to use it, right? And what's an application that 99% of our users use? It's Outlook, right? So you can access all of CRM entirely within Outlook should you choose. But it also, you know, for those who want to use the, you know, maybe cleaner, prettier web versions, you know, there's the ability to track uh, emails and all these different things. So really, you know, the idea here though is to get this 360 degree view of the customer. So who have they been talking to? Uh, what customer service cases might we have open? Projects, uh, are they on credit hold? Having all these different uh, key pieces of information for our sales team to have accessible to them just by simply looking up the name of a client. That's really the main idea here, is being able to have that 360 degree view and truly understand who's spoken to your clients without having to send a bunch of emails and phone calls and all of these just slow communication processes. It's all right there in front of you. So that's the idea um, what Dynamics 365 for sales is really trying to bring. So that's a little bit of an intro to Dynamics 365 and Dynamics um, 365 for sales. Let's talk about why integrate, which is the main point today. And if any of you have seen me present at, uh, in Nashville or on this topic before, I'm going to use the same analogy that I used before. I mean, a non-integrated sales process to me feels very much like using the postal service again, going, taking out email and phones, <clears throat> being able to communicate strictly through the mail. Um, and I say that because, you know, when we're using the mail, you write up a letter, you shove it in the mailbox and off it goes to the post office, right? Once that's out through the mailbox, you have no idea where it is. You have no confirmation that it, you made it to its sender unless they send you a reply. It may not even make it to its crop or, you know, proper address at all. So it might just die right in the post office somehow. That's kind of what, and then, you know, God forbid that they start sending replies, right? Because now this conversation that could have taken place within an hour through email or phone has now carried on for weeks. So that's kind of what a non-integrated systems process feels like to me in, um, you know, it, it feels separated. There's no continuity. Communication doesn't carry through. There's no visibility. So, you know, it, for example, if we have a sales process that most of our customers have, it originates in some form of a quoting system. And that could be something sophisticated or it could be something as simple as Excel or even a handwritten piece of paper. You deliver a quote to a customer and let's say they want to accept it. Great. How does that get into your ERP if you have a non-integrated systems process? Most likely somebody's gonna manually take that sales data and enter it into an ERP system. From there, you know, the, you then take that uh, from the ERP, you know, and you're hoping that it doesn't, nothing gets lost in the shuffle, right? So in my days as a salesperson, you know, multiple times you'd see, maybe they put a quantity wrong, a sales price wrong, it just makes you look bad in front of a customer. So every time that you have to re-enter the sales data into various different systems, you have, you're at an increased risk uh, for error. And, you know, like I said, you know, if you have multiple systems, you try to put uh, an entry into, you know, make a change in the ERP, now your sales system's off, right? So you gotta manually make that change in the sales or worse, the other ones don't get up or updated. So now you only have, one kind of version of truth in ERP and your other systems are now out of sync, right? 
So this is where, you know, I kind of bring my analogy to a close. You know, if I told you there was a way to do it way faster, way easier, way more accurate, you'd be interested, right? So that's kind of how I feel like going from email to now, or from, you know, snail mail, physical mail to email to phones, being able to have that information immediately, that just immediate transfer of you know, communication. That's what it feels like. So now with an integrated systems process, let's look, take a look at what this would look like. So you'd enter that data one time in a dynamic 365, right? So upon that entering of data, you can set up a number of different rules, but in this one, we're going to say that or the integration automatically transfers that data over to ERP. So we've only entered one time still, and we already have that in Dynamics 365 for sales and Dynamics Nav or AX, whichever system that you're using. Now, you can set up rules to have it be approved and all that, so don't feel like if your salesperson puts in a, uh, an order that it's automatically going to kick out to an invoice to a customer. No, we still have our checks and balances. But what you get is, again, that one-time entry and when your team is you know, reviewing it, when they post an invoice, um, that automatically gets transferred back to Dynamics 365 for sales. So you don't have to send emails and phone calls trying to figure out you know, what's going on with my order. I know where it's at because I always have complete visibility of what's going on. And then finally, you know, if any changes occur in either system, the others operate automatically. So now we have two different worlds, right? We have our Dynamics 365 for sales, uh, an application developed for salespeople specifically. So they can you know, live in this area and then with a couple clicks see their order, say, okay, great, my invoice was sent to the customer. And then you have the ERP, you have this controlled environment for financial accounting people, the people that this system was truly designed for being able to go through their processes and then have automatic communication go back to the sales system. So there's no sending emails, phone calls saying, hey, where's my order at? Um, everybody's completely in sync. The applications are in sync. Um, so just, you know, this is where, you know, you should really start to see that ROI. It's saving time, it's increasing accuracy, and it's gonna make you look better in front of your customers in the long run, right? So that's kind of why Integrate. Um, what I have here is uh, essentially a sample roadmap of what uh, an ERP, a Dynamics 365 integration can look like. So that starts with our customers, um, and I'm gonna be going through some of the CRM vernacular here. And when I'm saying CRM, I really mean Dynamics 365 for sales. Um, CRM is what it was previously called, but obviously, you know, people are thinking of CRM as I'm talking about this. So starting with our customers, um, having that customer account, uh, those two tables talking to each other, and you can set up different rules. So just kind of how you can navigate this table that I have in front of you. Um, the integration can take place on creation of a new account or customer or on an update. And you can have this if you want you know, NAV, for example, let's just say we're using NAV. If you want NAV to essentially be the master and only customer data carries from NAV to CRM, you can set it up that way as well. So it doesn't have to be a two-way integration if you don't want it to. If you don't want salespeople to make a change on an account, for example, and then have that change overwrite what was in NAV. I mean, you, for those of you familiar with ERP systems, you can tell why that could be an issue. You know, if it's their billing information, if there's, you know, shipping addresses, you don't want that just overwritten accidentally by a salesperson. So you can set up all these different checks and balances as we go. Um, but yeah, so it starts with the customers. We talked about addresses, addresses sync up. One of the biggest benefits I see with the integration is being able to have items and resources uh, carry over to products in CRM. And the reason for that, you know, the reason why I really love this is probably because I felt this as a big pain point when I was in sales in my previous uh, life prior to entering this, uh, en or entering our internet BMI, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we'd always have a product list that was kind of printed out sheet of paper and we never really knew, you know, when those prices were updated unless, you know, we got an email on it, but a lot of times pricing would just change. So we'd constantly be changing out this hard copy of a product list. We didn't have a great place to store it. The great thing about having it integrated, you know, in typically in our ERP systems, that's where our product list master always lives, right? 
So by having it updated there and it automatically carrying into Dynamics 365 for sales, you know that your salespeople always have uh, the most up-to-date list to work from. So along with uh, products that also inc includes price lists, so you could have numerous price lists, you know, discount price lists, industry price lists, you know, whatever it might be that you're currently tracking. Dynamics 365 for sales has the ability to handle all that. And then, you know, where we're going to kind of finish off our uh, demonstration is with the orders and invoices. So in our example today, you know, if we generate a quote and then an order in Dynamics 365 for sales, it will then kick that order over to our ERP system. Um, and then as that's going through, it can constantly update the orders to Dynamics 365 for sales. And then once you're ready to post that invoice, that invoice then integrates back to Dynamics 365 for sales automatically. So that's kind of a, a sample flow. Now, a lot of you are probably looking at this saying, it's not quite an exact fit and that's fine. You know, we have a fantastic integration team that can make this as flexible as we need. So if there's specific pieces here that are missing, we can add that if this looks like too much. We, you don't have to have all of these components to make it work. Um, so please just keep that in mind. So with that, let's talk about a couple basic CRM definitions. I'm gonna go through this really quickly, um, but I just wanna make sure everybody's caught up before I get into the demo here. So the first entity that we're gonna be working with is called a lead. And this is an unqualified sales engagement. So typically not a customer you've done business yet, um, the analogy I always like to use is, you know, it's kind of similar to, let's say you're at a trade show and a customer comes by with a business card and drops it in a fishbowl there. Maybe you shake their hand, you talk for a minute. You don't really know that your solution is a fit for them just yet, right? You have to qualify that lead, figure out, you know, go through your sales engagement steps that and determine that your solution is a good fit for this. And then you can kind of start building out accounts and opportunities throughout the system. So that opportunity is the next entity. And we define an opportunity as a qualified sales engagement. So once we've done that legwork up front, say, yes, this is a very real potential piece of business that we want to pursue. That's what we call an opportunity. An account, um, you heard me reference it on the last page, it's essentially our customers. So the organization that you work with, but uh, keep in mind, you have the ability to very easily track sub accounts as well. So um, today I'm going to be giving an example as if I'm working for a meat and cheese distributor. So let's say you know, Walmart is one of our clients. We can have Walmart at the top level and then we can have individual, you know, Walmart of Detroit, Walmart of Minneapolis, uh, so on and so forth and have all these sub accounts as well. Next we have contacts. So these are the specific people that you work with and these can be related specifically to the accounts. You can have uh, contacts related to opportunities of the individuals that you're talking to. Um, if we have anybody who's B2C on the, the phone, you know, this is kind of the main entity that you probably keep track of in your ERP. So uh, Dynamics 365 for sales is not only B2B, it's B2C as well. And then finally, you're gonna hear me say activities a number of times. <clears throat> and really what activities is, is just this um, grouping of, you know, all these different touch points that you have with customers. So phone calls, emails, tasks, appointments, all these different things, just what we call activities, things that people are actually doing. Um, and those can be related to all of the above entities as well. Okay. So this is what we're going to be going through in our demonstration today. It, it looks like a, quite a bit, but it'll, it'll breeze through and I think you'll understand it pretty well. So we're going to start by creating a lead. So again, that new sales lead, you know, we haven't really qualified them. We're unsure uh, how that's going to work. Um, if it's our, if our solution is going to be a good fit. And then we're going to go to qualifying that lead, which is then going to create an account contact and opportunity record. And I'll get into that a little bit more later, but then we can really start seeing where this integration takes place, being able to see what this account looks like in CRM versus an ERP system. Uh, within the opportunity, being able to pull our product list from an integrate or our products from an integrated product list from ERP. And then moving to quoting, which then generates an invoice, kicks it over to our ERP. Once ERP approves, they can then post the invoice and it kicks back to CRM. So that's kind of the general flow of what our demonstration is going to be today. So with that, I'm going to move to the uh, demonstration. Caitlin, do we have any questions thus far before I move into that? No, we do not have any questions so far. 
All right. I suspected not, but I was really just using it as an excuse to drink some water. So here we go. Um, I'm going to pull up Dynamics 365 for sales. And what we're looking at here is a dashboard. And what dashboards are is essentially a home page for our users to land on. Um, and these are specific to your individual users. And you, they can also have multiple dashboards. But really think of a dashboard as a home page. Um, and this is for you know a, a sales manager, for example. I can see my entire sales pipeline. Um, for, through my integration, I can see my top customers from our ERP system, who's purchased the most from us, who are the top customers you know, within this financial year that we have, so or fiscal year, I should say. Um, so really, and it, this is completely customizable uh, via another charts and also lists. So this is where your salespeople can have their list of activities, their to-do list, if you will, see the tasks that they have to follow up, the phone calls, um, any emails that they need to send out. This is kind of, you know, like I said, their daily digest when they come in the morning, they want to be able to consume all this data and figure out what they need to focus on. So we'll talk about dashboards and reporting a little bit at the end, but since this is where it starts, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about what you were looking at. But let's go ahead and get into our actual sales process. So I've taken the time to create these records ahead of time because again, I don't, I'm don't. i a firm believer in not wasting anybody's time. I don't wanna make you watch me type things. So I've created a lead named Andy Teal. So Andy Teal works at Coho Winery and really the, you know, the make-believe scenario we're going with here, um, Andy Teal has an interest in the assorted cheeses that we sell. So pretty simple, he works for a winery, you know, what goes better with cheese than wine, right? So we're gonna go through our, our, <clears throat> our sales process up here at the top, and this is a guided process we call a business process flow. Um, you can opt to use this or not. If you have specific steps that you want your salespeople to be doing or you have interest in developing them, this is how you can do that. You can say, okay, uh, you know, we, we have our senior salespeople who have, you know, figured this out, got this down to a science. I can say the first thing you need to determine if we're going to determine if this lead should be qualified to an opportunity is to find the purchase time frame. And then we got to find the estimated budget. And as I'm doing all these different things, you'll see this check mark uh, appear as I complete them. So aside from that, we've just essentially gathered basic information. So let's say I had a couple phone calls with Andy, and I'm ready to move this forward to an opportunity. It seems like our sales process is gonna be a good fit. Um, what this is going to look like is I'm going to click qualify, and it's automatically going to create an account, contact, and opportunity. So it's gonna take Andy Teal, the contact, create him a record. It's going to create Coho Winery, the account or organization that we're working with, create that, that record, as well as our opportunity, which is our advanced sales engagement, right? We've determined that our solution is a fit for him. So let's go ahead and take a look at that looks like. So I'm gonna click qualify, and I've actually already done this, so it's pre-created. So it's going to then move us over into our opportunity. So this was created automatically from my lead. It's carried over all the information that I had, um, and then I've added some additional. Um, but you can see now that we've moved into um, you know, all this different information. We can start getting different stages and steps for our proposed stage. And if you think back to the beginning of my demon or demonstration where we had the pipeline, this is how it determines that automatically. So all that reporting is done automatically comes free and out of the box. So we have our opportunity. I'll come back to this in just a second, but I want to show you what it also it's also done. So you can see these hyperlinks for the account. So Coho Winery, for example. I can click Coho Winery, and it's going to have brought in all that information that I put in. But what it will also do, and you can have this set up one of two ways, and I, have, I just selected nav. Um, for my example. So I can either have this set up to automatically integrate to nav, or I can have it be a manual push button. I want to get a bunch of details in and then submit it to nav rather than have it go automatically. So if I click this, it's then going to take that information automatically through our middleware and then plug that into nav. So one click now and off it goes automatically. So what that's going to look like, and again, I just chose nav, um, could have easily been either, but you should be able to follow kind of as I'm going. 
it would then take that Coho Winery account with Andy Teal and all the information that I had and bring that automatically into here. So now should any of this key information change on either record with the way I have my integration set up, it would carry over the other system. Again, completely flexible to what you need, um, but this is just kind of the example that I'm running with here. So that's kind of the first trigger for our integration that we see for our what we'd call our standard integration, if you will, is keeping that customer database uh, completely in check. So as we're going through, we can do a bunch of different things. Um, you know, we can have phone calls, follow up tasks, whatever else within this record. Um, I can add a phone call. Let's say I wanted to follow up with, or I had a follow up conversation with Andy on the cheeses he was interested in, right? So I can simply click OK, and I could put Andy Teal in here, and it should pull his record in, and it does. And then I can simply click OK, and then that will create uh, my phone call for me. We might have locked up here on it trying to find Andy Teal. There we go. And there, so then now that's all it takes to add a phone call. And you'll see on Andy Teal's uh, contact record that that phone call has been attached as well. So the system's smart enough to have these activities roll up and down. This is also where I was mentioning that you can have an integration with Outlook. So if you send an email in Outlook, these activities would show there. Um, so that's really about as far as I want to go into that, though. Again, I want to stay focused on our integration discussion, but I do like to show a little bit of just kind of the basics on how uh, Dynamics 365 for sales works. Um, so I'm going to go back to our opportunity, and I can do that by simply seeing my recently uh, viewed records here. So I'm going to hop back to our opportunity. And really quick, I'll just show you what a contact record. So we, I mentioned we have Andy Teal, right? So I can pull up this contact record as well. And you can see, you know, just the basic information, phone number, email, um, any activities that have taken place. So if any phone calls have been uh, that we've had. So you can see this one that I just added. So again, smart, intuitive uh, system, very easy to understand and just very quick and easy to add those notes of the phone call and get you that 360 degree view of the customer, right? Before I follow up and want to talk to Andy, I want to make sure that they're not having any issues, you know, that there's not anything that I should be aware of. And this is how I can see that because everybody's entering their phone calls and emails directly into the system. Okay. So I'm going to hop back to our opportunity and let's keep going through how this integrated sales process works. Let's see. All right. So here we are. If you think back to our diagram uh, of the different touch points that we have, one of the key things that I mentioned was the product list, right? So you can see I've actually already added this, so I cheat a little bit, but I can click this plus and I can see existing products and I can look at a library of all the different, you know, recently used cheeses that I had or look up more records. So the idea here is that all of these different products are now coming synced from NAV and just to kind of drive the point home, um, I grabbed a screenshot of what this assorted cheeses looks like in NAV. I can pull this open here and you can see this, right? So this is kind of what it looks like in NAV. It carries over to CRM and for the AX people, I hope you don't feel cheated that I'm using NAV screenshots. I swear it looks very, very similar. Um, so just kind of replace this screenshot of NAV with the picture of what your product looks like in AX. Um, and it, it essentially works the same way. You're really aiming to keep track of all of your products within your ERP system and have them flow to CRM. So in this example, in pretty much every scenario that we see, I shouldn't say every, but close to it, um, we see the most commonly that the product list is or <clears throat> maintained directly in the ERP. Okay, so you can see that we've added uh, a quantity of two uh, counts of this assorted cheese pack that we have here, just a very small order, 385 bucks. Um, and what we can do now is we've gotten all this information or opportunity, we've got the generic, you know, information about the deal, we've got the uh, ship to address, we've got the products, we can now generate a quote. So with one click, I can click the plus and it's going to automatically take all this information and plug it into quotes. And from here, I'm not going to go too far into it, but getting back to that, you know, one unified Microsoft, uh, we have the ability to take word templates. So you can 
with one click, say, you know, generate quote report, and it will take all of the products, it will take the key information, pull that into a Word document uh, that you can then convert to a PDF or you need to make small changes, whatever it might be, and then send it to the customer. So you can really use this as your quoting system as well. Um, and within this scenario, you know, that's kind of the assumption that we make. Now, this integrated process also works very well if you also have an existing uh, quoting system as well. From here, we would, but um, we'll kind of talk about that later if anybody has questions on how that might work. Uh, but today, I'm just going to kind of focus on assuming that we're doing the quoting within Dynamics 365 for sales. So let's say, okay, we've got our quote. We've sent it to our customer. They love it. Great. Uh, we want to make an order, right? So I can simply click Create Order, which again, I've already done because I don't want to make you guys watch that. Um, and I can see all related records up here. So I'm just gonna say, okay, what orders do I have related to this quote? Great, here's the one that I want. And again, this is where that integration kicks in one more time. So all this is just gonna be happening on the back end. Um, you know, the salesperson doesn't even have to think about it. At this point, we're essentially done with the order. So the salesperson does most of their stuff. Uh, in the quote, by the time they're creating the order, it should be good and ready to go. So it's gonna automatically kick over to ERP. And so then it'll pull this order into NAV. And this is where the ERP kind of takes over. And CRM, you know, if you think back to my mail analogy, if you will, this is where we put the, the uh, letter in the mailbox and ship it out, right? Now, that would be kind of how it would work in a non-integrated systems process. But since we've invested in having an integrated system, I can see now that I've put this order and it's gone over to ERP, let's say a status changes or it is pending review, for example, and then it moves to approved. You can see that anytime these statuses change within Dynamics 365 for sales. So the salesperson's always kept up to date and confirmed that you know sales or your financial accounting team is actually processing their order. And then from there, once you're, you know, the order is ready, you want to generate that invoice to the customer, right? So this is where it kind of looks like we then have that nav invoice uh, generated and that'll kick back to CRM. So what that'll look like, just to kind of drive this home here, I can see the related invoices to this order. I can see that there is in fact one created and I can pull that up. So I know I threw a lot at you really quickly there, um, but again, I, I promise this is a very easy process to understand, and I suspect that most of you were able to at least follow me for the most part here. So that is kind of, you know, from start to finish, the standard integration. Again, can be very flexible, you know, various products, very, or various different uh, steps and stages and which one's the master, you know, which way information can flow. We have all these different points, right? So please just keep that in mind. Um, Last couple things that I want to drive home. So, you know, we, we've kind of talked about this a little bit and it's great, but what benefit do I really get from having this information in one system? Again, this system is designed to be easy for salespeople to use. It's designed to have these nice native hooks in the outlook, being able to track all this inf or information. But really when you start integrating, you can start seeing, you know, total annual revenue for a customer, something that people who don't have an integrated system or their salespeople just really want to know how much business have I done with this person year over year. You can easily run reports like that and put them into your dashboards. And one last thing um, I like to kind of just really kind of tie this up. Uh, I worked in a previous organization where we did not have an integrated process. And as salespeople, we would literally spend, you know, about the first month to month and a half being trained on how to be proficient in the ERP system before we, that was really the main hurdle that prevented us from really, you know, taking care of our customers. That was, you know, the bulk of our training was being trained on a system, which is absurd. You know, it, you can get up and running within a couple hours within a CRM system. ERP is a much different animal because there's a lot more things you could mess up. And I always like to tell this story. I mean, my most notorious story of where I've just seen uh, people really get burned by having their salespeople within an ERP system. Um, a friend of mine needed to drop ship a drum material from Charleston to Detroit, overnight it um, to a customer. Now, again, you know, we're, we're salespeople. We're not necessarily the, the best at working with database systems all the time, as I'm sure many of you are aware. Um, and she accidentally selected our China location to drop ship from. So 
a drum of material that was worth two thousand dollars we now have overnighted drop shipped from china cost us twenty thousand dollars to do it so obviously not worth it and this is where you know the erp again it's designed for financial accounting um, operation type people to be working with them. Salespeople, you know, their main focus is closing deals, trying to get their customers what they need. And, you know, obviously, you know, most companies have checks and balances to not let that happen, but a lot of them don't. And it's, I've, I've seen it and I, I've seen the anguish on not only her face, but the manager and everybody. It's, oh, how could this happen? I mean, the CRM, not only does it is it more user friendly, it kind of puts that extra checks and balances that the people that are in your ERP system are the people that it's truly designed for are fully trained. Um, so that's kind of just how I wanted to you know, drive home uh, a little bit of the key benefits that you get. I'm gonna start with some closing remarks again. Like I said, I, I tried to leave 20 to 15 minutes left at the end uh, for questions. So we're just scratching the surface of the Dynamics 365 capabilities. Um, Dynamics 365 for sales, for service, for marketing, there's so much more that you can add on to it, but it was originally created as a development platform. And you know the, the key thing there is it's extremely easy to configure, drag and drop interfaces, um, no code to create fields and do all, even advanced workflows can be done without a single line of code. So it's an extremely flexible system. Um, the integrations, again, I, I, I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing me say it, and I'm sure you have it at this point, but the integrations are completely flexible. And the only reason I say this is people get kind of hung up on visuals and charts and graphs and say, okay, I get it, you know, or, or they'd say, you know, that doesn't, it's not an exact fit. I don't think this will work for me. I promise you we can make, make an integration work. We have a very strong integration team that can make it fit whatever your specific needs might be. At the end of the day, you know, we're trying to increase efficiency, visibility, and revenue. You can't invest in any system unless you're certain that in some way it's gonna affect the bottom line, right? Um, just about every, uh, and maybe with some nonprofits being uh, the exception, you know, for the most part, really at the end of the day, an organization is driving to uh, generate revenue, right? So if you're gonna take the time to, and money to invest in a system, it needs to bring you that revenue back, that return on investment. And again, this is where when I was consulting and you know being on leads as projects that I'd get the most excited because you see so much value so quickly, so much time saved in time entry, accuracy, all of these different cost saving things within a year, I would say the majority of our customers who integrated made that back. So just kind of keep that in mind. You know, this is really, it's, it's not meant to be cumbersome. It's meant to help all of your salespeople and then again, keep that safety net, which again, decreases the total amount of time spent communicating and increases your revenue at the end of the day. So that's really what it's all about. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this webinar to a close. Uh, other than if we have any questions, I'd be happy to stay on and answer them. So Kaylin, do we have anything just yet? I'm gonna say right now, we don't have any questions. Um, if you do have any questions later, I put my personal email on here as well as our marketing um, link as well. You can feel free to go to our website, check out what we're about, um, ask questions through there. So any way that we can help you out, we'd love to have the opportunity to speak with you. If you have any interest in potentially doing an integration, what that might look like for your specific org, um, I'd love to speak with you about that as well. So I sincerely appreciate all of you who stayed on the line today. Um, have a great day. And again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. So, Caitlin, I'll uh, leave it up to you to close it down here. Sounds great. Thank you, Ryan, for uh, giving us a great overview. And like Ryan said, we'll, um, yeah, we'll be seeing, uh, you'll be seeing a follow up email from us later today with the link to recording as well if you want to revisit it. So, thanks again, everyone, and have a great rest of your day.